today I want to talk to you guys about no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you or your family in Jesus name shall prosper. Isaiah 54 17 says no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every lying tongue that comes against you you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me. I'm gonna repeat that. Isaiah 54, 17, you need to repeat this to yourself. You need to repeat this to that devil because in my spirit, I know if the devil is attacking me and attacking my family and attacking my business, I know that he's attacking you too because the Bible says we are all going through the same things together as believers in Jesus Christ. Oh yes, you are being attacked. You may not see it. You may not feel it. Oh, but he's attacking. You may be saying, Dr. Show, well, I don't think he's attacking me. He is. You may be saying, Dr. Show, I don't think he's attacking my family. He is. You may be saying, I don't think he's attacking my child or my children. He is. But you have to know greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Remember, there will be weapons formed against you. There will be weapons formed against your marriage. There may be weapons formed against your business. There are going to be weapons formed against your finances, especially as believers in Christ Jesus, because the enemy wants to snatch the word of God from your heart. He wants you to believe that the word of God does not work and is foolishness. Don't fall for that lie. Yes, you will be attacked. Yes, the weapon will be formed against you. See, people think once you become a believer and having Jesus Christ in your life, and then you won't fight any battles. That is a lie. In fact, the battles will intensify. The battles become bigger and bolder and stronger. But guess what? So will you. If there's no battle that you will fight as a believer and lose, you will learn, but you won't lose. Why? It's because your father, your daddy is in control over everything. And beloved, you may be feeling like you are sinking in quicksand, quicksand, but you won't drown. You won't go under. You will be like Peter walking on the water. And when he looked at all the troubles, yes, did he sink? Yes. But he, did he drown? No. Jesus took his hand and pulled him up. I don't even believe that his head went under. I believe he was at his waist and he said, Jesus, he called it, you know what the word Jesus means? Jesus means salvation. Jesus means savior. And when you mention that name, Jesus, oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, help me get this out to somebody who need to be saved right now. Man, let me tell you something. Something happens in the supernatural. Man, there's angels that come to your assistance, man. And you may not see them, you may not feel them because they are fast. The Bible says the angels come as messengers. They are faster as the wind. You can't even see the wind, but you can feel it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I prophetically speak that over you right now in this present moment. Some of you guys have weapons that's formed against your family. You have weapons that are formed against your children, your son, your daughter. And you are feeling like, man, what can else can I do? I've took them to church, i prayed over them, but it seems like things are getting worse. It seems like social media is raising my children. It seems like TikTok is raising my teenager, uh, and, and I have a daughter, you know, and I know what it is. I'm gonna tell you, I, know, I see it. But let me tell you, beloved, the same hand of God <laughs> that was on you, that was on me, when we were crazy, when we were 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 30, that got us out of the pit. It's going to get your children. I don't care what kind of pit. there. David even said, even if I made my bed in hell, you are there with me. Man, God will never turn his back on you. I don't care if it's on your best day. I don't care if it's on your worst day. You know why? It's because as believers in Jesus Christ, God himself lives in us. He is in our body. He tabernacles inside of us. That's why God is concerned about what we eat, 
what we look at and who we deal with. I'm gonna repeat that. What we eat, what we put in our body because he's living in there. What we expose ourselves to because everything we expose ourselves to affects us in some kind of way, shape, form, or fashion. And not let who you are around. We all know, even society, even psychologists say, man, you are gonna be the sum total of the most five friends that you hang around or talk to. So you wanna evaluate your friendships because if you are the smartest person in your bunch, if you are the only one that's encouraging everybody else, man, you need to find some better friends. You need to ask God, God, open me up to find some better friends. And these friends may not look like you, they may not think like you, but guess what? They have a common thread and that's loving Jesus Christ and want the best for them and you too. See, good friends want the best things for you. Good friends won't set you up and good friends won't sell you out. I'm gonna repeat that. Good friends won't set you up and good friends won't sell you out. You may be saying, well, Dr. Show, well, how do I become a good friend? I don't know why I'm on this friend topic right now. And I believe that some people have lost good friends or best friends. And first thing they say, Lord, I don't, I don't have any friends. Let me ask you this question. Have you been a good friend? Do you call and check on somebody? You know, when you haven't taught them in a while, do you send them a text and say, hey, I was just thinking about you? You know, do you tell your friends, and this is no homo guys, that you love them? The first time one of my homeboys told me, you know, one of my good friends told me he loved me. And I was just like, ooh, that felt kind of weird. <laughs> but then I understood that it's okay, man, to tell your buddies that you love them. Why? It's because they are your brothers, man. You are in this thing together. You are on the battleground together. And you need each other. That's why Jesus, when he sent his disciples out, he never sent them out alone. He sent them out in pairs because he knew that they were going to need each other. One of them weakness is going to be the other person's strengths. And one of the other person's strength is going to be their weakness. God never called us to battle alone. Oh my goodness. So Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So that weapon that forms against you, it won't prosper. You may be saying, well, Dr. Short, well, I think I did it to myself. It still won't prosper. Well, I found myself at a young age looking at Playboy magazine. At a young age watching pornography because I pulled it out my mom's or my dad's drawer. And I've been still having this issue since I was five or six or seven years old or I might have gotten you know molested as a kid or my my parents allowed me to stay over my you know over the babysitter house and she did something to me all these things that we get bound up and we cover up man in the name of Jesus God wants you to expose them and you may be saying Dr. Show, I don't feel comfortable exposing them to people because I'm afraid I'm going to be judged, but that's okay. But guess what, man? You can expose it to God. He was there. He's seen it all. You can tell Jesus about your problem and he will fix it. That's why Jesus is a carpenter. Not only he fixed physical things, he fixed spiritual things. He fixed spiritual hurt. He fixed church hurt. Some of you guys don't go to church anymore because you got hurt by your pastor. Oh my goodness. Or you might got hurt by a church member, but that doesn't mean you need to stop going to church. That means you dealt with somebody who was immature. That means you dealt with somebody who was cuckoo for a cocoa for cocoa puffs. But that was not God. See, beloved, God is not going to play you out and God is not going to hurt you. God want to help you. God want to heal you. God wants to give you the abundant life. That's why he emptied out the heavenly bank account and gave us Jesus, his only begotten son. And Romans 8, 30 says, since God gave us Jesus, how much more will he give us greater things? Jesus even said that I got to leave because I got to give you somebody and something greater. He's given us the Holy Spirit because back in the day, the Holy Spirit never lived in them. 
He came and went. He lived on top of them. He lived above them, but he never came in them. But Jesus said, when I go to the Father, I'm going to ask the Father to send you a helper, a counselor, a guide. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus' the Spirit living in all of us at the same dang gone time. Like rapper said, at the same dang time. At the same, at the same doggone time. That's right, man. No weapon. In fact, say it with me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, and guess this other part. Every lying tongue that rises up against me, you shall condemn. When that word you, that's not saying God. That's saying you, as in you, shall condemn. So any lying tongue that rises up against you, just condemn it. Say, no, 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 God. I'm, I'm standing on what you said. Lord, I'm standing on the fact that you said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm standing on the fact you said by Jesus Christ stripes I'm healed. I'm standing on the fact that you said that no weapon formed against me or my children shall prosper. That's right. I keep going back to Isaiah 5, 54, 17 because somebody need to put that into their, you know, biblical bank account. <laughs> Lord, you said that you're going to perfect everything that concerns me. Lord, you said that any kind of addiction I fall into, Lord, you're going to deliver me out. You are the great deliverer. You are the great healer. So every lying tongue that comes and see, the lying tongue may not be something you audibly can hear. It may be coming something from inside of you because the devil wants to work inside on your brain. He's going to be telling you everything that you are not. Oh, my goodness. Or he's going to tell you everything that you are that's negative. <laughs> he is a liar and he is the father of lies. So no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every lying tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn it. Condemn it. Call it down. That's not who you are. And that's not who you're going to be. Because in Christ Jesus, you are righteous. And that's the other part in Isaiah 54 17. It says, and his righteousness shall be of me. So it's not even your own righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus. As believers in Christ Jesus, we adopt his righteousness and he took and took care of all our sins and cast them as far as east to the west. In fact, I'm going to say it right now. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you're no longer a sinner. Quit calling yourself that. You're no longer a sinner. Yes, you might sin. You might do something. But God looks at you just like he looks at Jesus without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. You don't believe me? Go and look at Romans 5.1. Look up Romans chapter 5, verse 1. God has transferred his righteousness into your account all because of what Jesus Christ has done. Therefore, right now, I don't care what you did last week. I don't care what you did last night. You are spotless. You are white as snow because of everything that Christ Jesus has done for you. And you got to remember, see what Jesus did on the cross that took care of everything, past, present, and future. Why? It's because God is, out, operates inside of time and outside of time. So the Bible even says Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Before Adam and Eve sinned, Jesus had already, in God's economy and in God's mind, has already paid the price. Oh my goodness, man. If you can get what the Holy Spirit is speaking right now, oh man, this will take you on a on, on a dopamine level that nothing will ever be able to touch. Oh my goodness. In fact, say it with me right now. One more time. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every lying tongue that rises up against me, I shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. I just want to pray, but Lord, in the name of Jesus, everybody that can hear me and see me right now, Lord, whatever mistake they made in since they were eight years old, 10 years old, last year, last month, last night, let them know that your blood of Jesus is more than enough and took care of their sins. You don't judge them. You call them righteous. You call them holy. You said they are without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. They have to just get up and look forward to your promises. Get back up again. The Bible says a righteous man or woman may fall down seven times in a day. 
but they will get back up again. Your word says your grace and your mercy is new every single morning. Every time you get up and open your eyes, beloved, your grace and mercy is renewed. Man, in Jesus' name, love y'all.